Let's get to some really big news for Leicester fans then. They've all been waiting for this. Kirsty Edwards has news of a signing, Kirsty. Um. I do. I think we may be the last people left here in, in the building now because a load of cars have just left because, yes, finally the deal is over the line. Harry Souter is a Leicester City player. We revealed this morning that uh, they'd agreed a £50 million deal plus add-ons uh, with Stoke City. And now the deal is signed. Five and a half years. Uh, it will take into the summer of 2028. He's a six foot six defender, so uh, should be a big presence at the back for Leicester. We saw him put in some colossal performances for Australia at the World Cup. And I think after that, a lot of Stoke City fans thought they may well lose him in January. They've been proved uh, right. It's taken Leicester right till deadline day to get their man. But he is in through the door. And uh, yeah, that five and a half year deal now confirmed. Also confirmed today as well, a young striker. This is one for the future, Nathan Apoku. He's gone straight out on loan to uh, Leicester's sister club over in Belgium, OH Leuven. Also confirmed, Iose Perez out on loan till the end of the season to rail Betis. Uh, that's when his contract runs out here at Leicester anyway. And we're still waiting on word on Mark Albrighton. He's been having talks with West Brom in the search for more regular football, so could be going out on loan over there, waiting on confirmation on that one. But Brendan Rodgers started this transfer window uh, wanting to fill three key positions. He wanted a left-back, uh, he wanted a winger, and he wanted a centre-back. He's now got all three through the door in this transfer window with Harry Souter, the last of them, to arrive. He's now a Leicester City player. Well done. Kirsty, thank you. Uh, yeah, Harry Souter in. Victor Christensen in, the defender from FC Copenhagen. Tete, the winger, uh, in from Lyon. Eight goals, ten assists in 30 appearances for them. Actually, a Shakhtar player. Um, Clinton, they've been sucked back into the relegation picture after a torrid time since the World Cup. Are you now satisfied that Leicester are in better shape for the running? I'm not sure. They're, they're good signings, but I don't know if they're in, in better position. They'll be a better position when James Madison's back on that football pitch, without a shadow of doubt, because they're the two players that will keep them up. Madison and Barnes, I think them two are outstanding. Listen, they've still kept a hold of likes of Yuri Tillemans. There are probably a lot of clubs looking at Yuri Tillemans. He said he'll probably see out his contract. They've got players that can go and create, cause problems, Jewsbury Hall. A good signing. Tete, I've seen him play at Lyon. He's a lively winger, really lively, can go and cause problems. Obviously, Harry Suter had a good World Cup, but hasn't played a lot of football at Stoke. But they did need to strengthen in that centre-half region because Johnny Evans has been out and he hasn't played consistently. And I think they have missed Johnny, Eden, Johnny Evans' leadership. Yeah. So the business, what Brendan Rodgers wanted to do, yeah, he wanted a left-back, wanted a centre-half, and he wanted a winger. He got the business. Now it's down to the players to go and produce. And, yeah, they've got a tough run of games, but they've still got a lot of quality in that squad. I mean, so many of the clubs, bar uh, one which we won't mention, Sue, so, uh, <laughs> for you and I down there, clearly <laughs> feeling the, the urgency and the need to strengthen their squads, and Leicester are a prime example of that. Yeah, they are, and I think that's what you need to do if you're, if you're there, if you're, you know, round the bottom of the table or you, you feel like you could potentially get dragged into it, then you need to strengthen to try and keep yourself out of it. And, and like you say, that's what... Leicester have had a strange season, haven't they? You know, they, yeah. they started off poor, then they seemed to kick on, and you thought, oh, they're going to keep kicking on now, and then they've obviously really dropped off since the, the World Cup. So I think, yeah, bringing a, a centre-back was certainly a, a yeah. priority. It'd be interesting to see if he can make the, the step up. I know he had the ACL injury, so he's had little niggles from that. But, he, you know, he's a, a good quality um, centre-half. So I think the, you know, the positions that they needed to strengthen, um, that's pretty much what, what they've done. And, and that's what Brendan Rodgers will hope that, of course, Madison getting him back fit, playing in the cup game, you could see the difference that, that he makes on the field and, and just adding those signings in quickly. Mm. Just finally, quickly, Chris, 35 goals they conceded in 20 games, Leicester. Uh, are you confident they'll be OK now with the signings they've made? Yeah, I don't know, actually, when you look at the fixtures coming up as well, but, you know, I think everybody down the bottom of the table, it's, it's going to be difficult for them, but you know, I think when we look at... <laughs> You could put a case forward for every team to go down down there and you could also put a case forward for them to stay up. Mm -hmm. um, it's one thing getting the players in the, the door. I think Clinton just said it there. You know, you've got to hit the ground run. Um, you know, and, and I think Leeds have, have made a, a couple of additions as well, which you know, they, on paper they look good signings. Um, you know, so there is a few teams down there that have added to their squad, but um, you know, the players are going to have to come in, hit the ground running and um, see an improvement in the results. But as I said, you know, there's 
five or six teams down there, seven teams maybe, only three can go down.